I fixed my lactose intolerance by chugging all the lactose. This just randomly came up and I thought that was interesting because I thought that if you have lactose intolerance, that would be the last thing that you would want to do, which would be to consume lactose. But apparently this person has found out how to combat lactose intolerance by chugging all the lactose. Let's take a look. So I completely fixed my lactose intolerance based on this cool paper from the 90s. Colonic adaptation to daily lactose feeding in lactose maldigesters reduces lactose intolerance. I had never seen this. I ne actually never knew this was a thing. But what I learned from this paper was a dark truth of absolutes. This isn't a method a real medical doctor would tell you. It basically involves cramming lactose for two weeks and suffering the protests of every part of your digestion. This oh. is not a recommendation. This is a documentation of the power of science and the lengths I went to to be able to eat mozzarella sticks again. Mmm. Yeah, I bet she's gonna be in a lot of pain by the end of this. I don't know. I would be like, well, you know, I don't really drink milk anyway. I don't have to have cheese. Maybe I'll just skip this one out. All was well between me and my love of milk until COVID. At least that's what I told myself. Though, in retrospect, the signs of my decreasing lactase production were present. I was just ignoring them. Lockdown was what sent my lactose intolerance spiraling. My schedule was jumbled. I was too depressed to make myself nice morning drinks, so I stopped drinking milk tea for a few months. When I finally had milk again, it was bad. Like, really bad. I have noticed that whenever I try to drink any milk product, since I don't actually drink a lot of milk, sometimes the milk is like really hard on my stomach. Like I could just get like a regular, here we have Highland and great value. We got a, like the regular great value whole milk jugs. If I drink one of those, like my stomach will be tearing itself apart. But then if I drink Fairlife for some reason, it's fine. Like I tried Fairlife and it's actually really smooth on my stomach. But the problem is that it's so smooth, I wanna drink the entire thing. And then that's not helpful either. <laughs> so I gotta be careful with all that milk. It starts hurting after a while. My gut feels horrible if I drink too much milk. And by too much, I mean any more than this. Had enough, I decided to try out lactose-free milk. And that's where this adventure begins. So I tried lactose-free milk, but it didn't really work for me. Like it kind of did, but not super well. I would say my yeah. symptoms went down by maybe like a third, but I really wanted no symptoms. So I looked into how lactose-free milk is made. So to zoom out, lactose is a complex sugar in milk that needs a special enzyme, lactase. Jesus Christ, okay. O-H-C-H-2-O-H, O-H-C-H-2-O-H, O-O-O, O-O-O, O-O-O! To make lactose-free milk, they extract lactase enzymes from fungi and then add them straight to the milk to break down the lactose before you even drink it. Actually, mm. cheese and yogurt are generally not as bad for people with lactose intolerance because the microorganisms that ferment them also eat and break down the lactose. I wasn't sure why lactose- Really? Milk. Okay, so you can still eat cheese. All you lactose intolerant people, eat some goddamn cheese. What are you doing? I wondered whether maybe mixing lactase with milk didn't yield a complete reaction for whatever reason. I decided to read more about Maybe. how exactly the process worked. I went on Google Scholar and searched lactose breakdown or something like that and found this great paper from the 90s. Colonic adaptation to daily lactose feeding in lactose maldigesters reduces lactose intolerance. Basically, it reduces if you're lactose, lactose maldigester, meaning you're lactose intolerant, and you consume lactose daily, your colon will adapt. But what inspired this research? You see, the United oh, States- Oh, I actually thought uh, colonic. <laughs> I thought that was being like the, the old colony, like the olden times. <laughs> I didn't know I was talking about where you shit. <laughs> Red Cross sales use of non-fat dry milk and hunger relief programs. Yeah, I know that we sell a bunch of the uh, non-fat dry milk. We sell the condensed milk and stuff and people buy that up like crazy. I mean, of course pe people still buy like gallons and half gallons of milk, but no, this non-fat milk is actually like pretty popular. It's had an excess of powdered milk in the 80s and decided to donate it to countries experiencing famine. Countries where no one could digest lactose. The United yeah. States routinely has offered non-fat dry milk, of which this nation has millions of tons in surplus. As a food oh yeah, they, to we do. Regions of the <laughs> There's globe. a shit ton in of it. In some cases, the donation has caused more problems than were solved. What? Powdered milk, frequently, is distributed to areas where milk is not part of the typical diet, which is particularly true in parts of Sub-Saharan Africa. Despite fairly severe reactions from the lactose maldigesters, subsisting on a diet of straight powdered milk, 
After a few weeks, their symptoms subsided and they were able to consume the milk. The donation has caused more problems that were solved, but the more that they would drink it, then their stomach wouldn't be near as bad. It, it wouldn't hurt them as often. Okay, if you're lactose intolerant, drink a whole bunch of powdered milk. Don't even make it into a liquid. Just down the powdered milk, just take it and drink it, and then you would be fine. <laughs> I did this. <laughs> Yeah, don't do that. Don't do not do what I just said. Subsisting on a diet of straight powdered milk, after a few weeks, their symptoms subsided and they were able to consume the milk. But why? Most people with lactose intolerance are actually the evolutionary default. For them, the mammalian lactase gene, the DNA instructions to make the lactase enzyme, are only active as a baby. This makes sense mm. because in nature, only babies nurse. This lactase gene well, stops true. being expressed after they would have been weaned, meaning no more lactase enzyme, meaning no more chocolate banana split sundaes. But some populations mm. have developed lactase persistence, where their bodies do continue to create the lactose enzyme. So wait, does that also count for people who have been, uh, well, yeah, I guess it would make sense if people were also doing formula. I would figure formula and breastfeeding would do the exact same thing. So th it doesn't matter what you drink. As long as it's some sort of milk-based stuff, you get that enzyme. And then whenever you stop nursing and stuff, then it's gone. Okay, I get you here. I'm sorry. ...have developed lactase persistence, where their bodies do continue to create the lactose enzyme. The sub-Saharan population, given the powdered milk, did not have this lactose persistence mutation. They didn't have any lactase. So the question is, how did their bodies adapt to the lactose? What really changed was their gut biome. You see, we digest the food we eat, but so do a myriad of various bacteria living in our guts. When someone mm. with lactose intolerance eats a large amount of lactose over the course of a few weeks, the population of gut bacteria that can digest the lactose explodes. And then they're blessed with mutualistic symbiosis a colony of hungry microbes digesting the lactose for them. Okay, I'm gonna try to explain this in Gen Z terms. So basically you have some people inside of you and if you drown them all out, so that way you can pee and poop them all out, the new people will come in and take over and they'll start building a metropolis inside of your gut so that way they could go ahead and drink some more of that nice little lactose that you put in there. But if you deprive them of the lactose, then you're gonna have to put more lactose in and then you're gonna have to start the process again. It's a rinse and repeat. It's the survival of the fittest. <laughs> I had to try it myself. My instinct said, it's the lockdown, go for it. So I went to my local grocery store go and bought for several it. boxes of powdered milk so I could ensure maximum lactose concentration. Oh boy, uh oh, what happened? Hey, what is that? I poured it into my glass jar. Wait, what is that? Low fat milkman milk? Where are you from? I have never seen that before in my life. Oh my God, it's actually a thing. Is it even available in stores? I feel like this is only like, you gotta, you, you gotta order this. Damn, I may need to try that at some point. Come on, open it. You got, you got this. Okay, now you gotta drink all of that. <laughs> <laughs> she looks so weird. I don't know if I trust this bag, guys. I don't think I like this. <laughs> and then I added less water than it called for. Hey, hey, why don't you put the jar down on the table and then fill that up? Because I feel like that this is gonna... Actually, you know what? You know what? It's your channel. You, you do what you because want. Because I wanted sort of this, like, thick slurry. Thick slurry? What are you talking about? <laughs> What's happening? Hey, you got the milk. Ew. Oh, it's chunky ass milk. <laughs> Look at her. She's like, you seeing this shit, dog? <laughs> Ew. And then I chunked it nonstop for two weeks. Oh. Wow, the smell is really bringing me back. First came the pain, intense stomach cramps, and oh boy. very loud stomach grumbles, or borborygmus, heralding the beginnings of the battle. Then came the smell. If you have roommates, mm. they will despise you. Then came the extended <laughs> bathroom time. Turns out, you smell the bad. excess lactose in your colon also messes with your osmotic pressure. There will be a lot of liquid. My entire digestive oh. system was oh. groaning in protestation. But this was only day one. I believe in science. I couldn't give up yet. 
The second day was a bit better, only in that our sense of smell relies somewhat on novelty, so if you smell the same farts for long enough, you basically stop smelling them. Ew. Or at least that's what I told my roommates. Day three. <laughs> at this point, I If you smell the same thing for so long, you just become immune to it. That's like what they tell people with cigarettes. The more you smoke cigarettes, the more you just won't smell them anymore. I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do, though. That's the way you clean out the bad and come in with the good. Yeah, that's right. I was starting to get dehydrated, despite all the liquid I was drinking. I was losing too many electrolytes. My solution, of course, was to add some salt to my milk slurry. This was fine. I mean, I wasn't doing this for the taste of powdered milk. I was doing it for the ice cream sundaes of my future. Day four was bad. Nice. Day five was bad. Even I was starting oh to question God. whether a diet of pure powdered milk was really the best interpretation of this study. And perhaps in my over-eagerness, I was putting myself through more than was reasonably necessary. Day seven was an improvement, mostly because I let myself eat other food, as well as the powdered milk. After that, mm. though, I started well, to experience good. a logarithmic decay of symptoms. By the end of the two weeks, I was nearly asymptomatic. And by that, I mean back to my regular old irritable bowel syndrome symptoms. So now I had to test my newfound lactose superpowers. I got all of my favorite foods that caused me problems. Ice cream, soft cheese, mm -hmm. milk tea, mm -hmm. and nothing. No problems at all. I was cured. God, I'm going to say this wrong. Like the flu shot has stuff in it. So that way you can combat whenever you get the flu. Like it gives you like a little dose of something that's equivalent to it. That's pro probably what this was. It was like you just dose yourself up with all of this lactose stuff. And then it's like, okay, all those things are in there. All the things came out that weren't supposed to be in there. And now you can eat ice cream again. Congratulations. Would you like to go to Andy's frozen custard? In conclusion, all right, what's the conclusion? Would I here? recommend this method? No. Also, for some reason, I'm still kind of sensitive to whey, but only when it's an ingredient in something else, like a protein bar. Maybe I need to do a whey diet next. Also, just because this worked for me, it probably wouldn't work for everyone. Everyone's gut biome is different. Also, while lactase intolerance does not cause damage to the gastrointestinal tract, it sure feels like it does. No, I bet doctor. it does. And I'm pretty sure no sane doctor would recommend this to anyone. I just wanted to share my cautionary tale. She fixed her lactose intolerance, but at what cost? That was a hell of a video. You're gonna like this. Go and subscribe to HD or HG Moderism. Modernism? This person, go subscribe to her. <laughs> that, that was interesting. Okay, like I, I'm pretty. I'm pretty happy about what I just witnessed there. All right, this was just a random YouTube channel that I found. I didn't know what else to do for a YouTube video because there's just not enough time in the day and there's so much more things that I need to do. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, go take a look at some random YouTube channels. There's so many that pop up in my uh, recommended page now. I, I wanna take a look at all of them, see what these crazy ass videos that other people are putting out look like. All right, y'all, I gotta get going. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Okay, all right.